Hi, I'm Paul. Welcome to the 2014 Texas State Disc Golf Championship, brought to you by the Disc Golf Guy. Ricky Waisaki throws his drive, which looks to be off and to the right. And it comes back and it's on the shelf, not far from the pin. Paul's shot is up and looks like to be fighting the wind. And he's going to be short of the basket, but he's going to have a putt at birdie from there. Beth with a very good looking shot. Looks to be right up by the pin. Good shot by Paul McBeth. And Eric McCabe going up and looks like he will be finishing left. There's your tee shots on hole 13A as we start. Second round coverage of the 2014 Texas State Championships. McCabe's putt from 50 is just left right next to the basket. And Paul's birdie putt is just a bit high on the left side of the chains. Oh, and just a bit left, along with a roll that continues. Ricky's putt for par is up and good. He's going to get out of here with a par three. McCabe. McCabe taps in for his birdie. Paul McBeth taps in for his birdie from two feet. Paul McBeth is the only birdie. Paul McBeth carting the only birdie on their starting hole. And he hits off the top of the pyramid and is within 30 feet of the basket. Paul Ulibarri going with a hyzer just like Paul McBeth did. And Ricky's drive is up. I'm not sure why Paul went before Ricky on that last drive here. I'm going to have to Find out the story. It might have been that Paul just simply went out of turn. And last to tee is your 2010 world champion, Eric McCabe. There's a little right to left win. These players are playing that, and that's going to be a good stop for Eric McCabe. First to putt is Ricky Waisaki. And just a bit off to the right. Paul McBeth telling the gallery as long as they stay still, they'll be fine. This is Paul for birdie. And good for Paul McBeth here on the elevated basket. And Paul Ulibarri makes good on his birdie attempt as well. I expect Ricky here will be tapping in for his par. And Eric McCabe should have the easy birdie. That's 13B, our second hole here. Three birdies and a par. Paul McBath taking the right hand side all the way up. Very nice shot. And Paul's looking for that just to hook up a little bit to get him back in bounds. And Eric McCabe going straight out. It's going to hyzer nicely. Perfectly safe. And Ricky with a beautiful drive. What do you all think I went out? Did I turn out? Or did I go and he should be up there looking at a birdie putt. Paul declaring a provisional before throwing this shot. McCabe from 40 for birdie. 
just a bit high and right. McCabe in for his par. Ricky Waisaki is only about 12 feet deep of the basket here on this hole. Ricky easily cards his first birdie of the round. Paul will be taking a penalty four after his OB shot. And Paul McBeth will be tapping in from a few feet left-handed for style and his birdie. We're through three holes. Let's move on to hole 15. We're here on our fourth hole after Paul McBeth has started with three straight birdies. Riki Waisaki next on the tee after carting his first birdie. And he's now within 15 feet here. Third to throw will be Eric McCabe. Eric sitting at one down for the round after three. And uh, he has gone deep, not as deep as he did yesterday. And after the bogey four from just barely going out of bounds on the previous hole, Paul will be up last. Coming in with a hyzer, he just needs a little bit more angle to it. And he's also sitting about 28, maybe 30 feet just on top of the pin. Eric McCabe, just a bit low. Paul here saying he was a foot in. What he means by that, he's a foot in from the 33 foot circle. So he's approximately 32 feet from the pin. And a beautiful putt by Paul. Macbeth for birdie just barely squeaks in. After starting four for four, Paul Macbeth has the tee here on hole 16. And he's going to need for that to sit down. And he has gone out of bounds just by a few inches. Ricky Waisaki going with a forehand. Looks like he's parked his shot. Paul going with a hyzer shot out and around, needing to get past it, and he's done so. And uh, he's going to leave himself a nice birdie putt. Eric McCabe also opts for the hyzer route. And it looks like it's going to skip in nicely. He'll also have that for birdie. His bogey four after going will be off the tee. Oh, and he is just a bit high. He's going to take a double bogey five. The other three card mates are in position to score birdies here. Eric McCabe's birdie putt is up and good. Paul's birdie putt is also up and good. Waisaki left with just eight or ten feet. There was a call of foot fault on the tee by Eric McCabe. However, it was not seconded by anyone. And Paul McBeth is going to lose three strokes to the rest of the group here on this one hole. We heard earlier in the week it would be a pivotal hole, and it has proven just that today. Ricky throws a shot, which the wind has gotten under. It's going to be turning over to the right. Paul's going to ride that wind a little bit more. It's going to land more in the center of the fairway. Good looking shot by Paul. Gabe's shot is up and riding the wind as well. 
right on the center of the fairway. And Paul throwing his pink destroyer out. Beautiful turnover shot. And has a crushing drive by Paul. And Waisaki has thrown a huge crushing shot. Looks like the wind may have gotten under it. Turned it over a little more than he was playing for. Still a huge crush by Waisaki. And McCabe has to go up and to the right on the hyzer line here. A little obstruction. Paul's got a turnover shot that looks very nice. Needs it to just hyzer back. He's going to set himself up for an easy birdie from there. Macbeth has to go with Annie out of his hand. He's going to ride that wind and it's going to finish back for him. He may not be in eagle range, but nonetheless a huge crush by Macbeth. Eric McCabe is really struggling with his positioning here. That tree is everywhere he wants to be in terms of coming through with his arm. And after a lot of struggle, he gets that great shot off. Ricky has this approach shot for his eagle attempt, and he's landed within 10 feet. Macbeth throwing into a headwind, puts it up there very nicely and touches the pole from 90 feet. He's going to have to settle for a birdie here. And Ulibarri approaches to within five feet as well. A cave for birdie and is just a bit wide right. Eric, Mc Eric McCabe makes good. He takes a par. Ricky settles for a birdie four here today on this 1,003 footer after eagling it yesterday. Both Macbeth and Ulibarri are gonna also take birdie fours. That's a 1,003 foot hole 17. Ricky Waisaki here on the tee. And it looks like he has gone out of bounds. As Paul's on the tee, we have a constant wind, which is a little bit of a tailwind for them on this tee. Just felt a few raindrops, a few sprinkles coming in. And Paul won't be phased with his park job. McCabe here. Looks like a great shot coming in by McCabe. It's going to need to slow down a little. And McCabe has gone a little bit deep. It looks to be about 35 past the pin. Got Eric McCabe's birdie attempt here from 35. Oh, and left chain just barely out. Paul for birdie from 28 makes good. And Wasaki makes good. That's going to be a penalty three, so to speak. And Paul McBeth's going to have three feet for his tap in birdie. Birdies for Macbeth and Ulibarri, pars for McCabe and Ricky Waisaki. We have Paul Ulibarri on the tee here on hole one. Beautiful hyzer shot coming in nicely. And Paul's within 20 feet of the pin. After birdieing 15, 16, and 17, Paul Ulibarri's on the tee. And he has put himself within 30 feet. Paul McBath next to tee, throwing a destroyer out into the right. Playing for that big hyzer. 
and Paul just narrowly misses the basket. He's within 15 feet of the pin. After making his circle three, so to speak, Waisaki is third on the tee. And he is about 30, maybe 35 feet from the pin. Eric McKay blasts the tee. Oh, and he hits the bottom of the basket. I apologize, he hits the bottom of the pole. And it was probably a good stop for him. Waisaki is out, and he's only about 30 feet from the pin. And he makes good on his birdie attempt. Paul Ulibarri has about 28 feet, and he makes good as well. Looks like we should have a star frame from our leader card here on hole one. Eric McCabe's gonna go with flow of play, meaning he's just gonna tap in next, and does so for the birdie. And Paul McBeth with less than 15 feet. Birdie twos for everyone on the leader card here on hole one. We are here on hole two after everyone birdied. We've got Paul Ulibarri on the tee. Paul has come down a little bit early and short of the basket. He should be in bounds. Paul McBeth here is second on the tee. Paul McBeth going wider than we just saw Ulibarri go. And he's going to be a little bit short on his birdie opportunity, but he'll have a putt. Ricky Waisaki up next. And Ricky with a beautiful drive, just as he did yesterday. Last to tee is Eric McCabe. And Eric's going to have a long birdie opportunity from there. We've got Paul checking his footing because he's going to be following through with his jump putt. And he's going to be just underneath the pin. Eric McCabe has about 55, maybe 60 feet. And he's just off the front of the basket. Paul's about 40 feet away. His putt is up. And good. The crowd loves it here on hole three. Paul McBeth for birdie two. Waisaki with less than 30. There is a slight pause as it hit off the side of the basket and went into the water out of bounds. He's gonna have to take a one stroke penalty. He's gonna have to bring it in exactly one meter, up to one meter, and he will be putting from there. He will be carting a bogey four from birdie to bogey for Ricky Waisaki. McCabe and Ulibarri with pars. Beth going with a long, wide hyzer. Looks to be right up near the pin on this 452 foot hole. Paul Ulibarri's shot is up. Looks very similar to Macbeth. Maybe not quite as much distance, but a very nice drive by Paul Ulibar. Emac with a nice low line drive. Just clip something, he's gonna be a little bit short. Next on the tee is Ricky Waisaki. And 
Ricky, who absolutely parked this hole yesterday. This is a beautiful drive, and he's certainly going to be putting for birdie today. McCabe from 60. Paul's putt is up and somehow slips right through the chains. Lysaki makes good from 18 feet. Eric McCabe is good for his par. And Paul Macbeth will have a tap-in birdie from 5 feet. Birdies for Waisaki and Macbeth. Macbeth throws wide and high, a little higher than he was looking for, asking for it to sit down right out of his hand. Maybe flirting with the out of bounds. It looks like he's getting a green flag though. Waisaki goes big. Very long throw by Ricky Waisaki. Yulabari hoping to hit a tree or something as he turned that one over. And McCabe has the straightest drive in the group. Looks like it's going to finish just slightly left. Should be in good position to attack the pin from there. Yulabari had turned his drive over right off the tee. He was hoping for it to get down, and now he's throwing a forehand, which should put him up within, uh, looks like about 60 feet. Paul had an awkward stance from where he was, but it looks like he has put himself up on the green. He will have a putt for birdie three. Eric McCabe asking for it to go just a little bit, and he's going to be pretty happy with that. He should have a putt for birdie three. Waisaki with an obstructed view just clips the top of the trees there. Oh, and Wasaki draws metal from 70 feet. Paul from just inside 33 feet makes good for the birdie three. And Eric McCabe makes good for birdies. Macbeth and McCabe good for birdies. Waisaki and Yulabari pars. Paul Macbeth is on the tee. And Paul with a booming drive is going to need to sit down. That is going to come close, but no, he is completely inbounds. Good shot by Paul. He's going to have an awkward stance. After birdieing hole four, we've got Eric McCabe up on the tee next. There's an absolute night and day difference from yesterday's win compared to today's right at the moment. It is very calm. During yesterday's round, they were throwing into a direct headwind here on hole five. Waisaki's going to need just a little skip. He's gotten just that. Very nice drive by Ricky Waisaki. And last on the tee is Paul Ulibarri. Paul able to go wide with the hyzer, looking to just land in the center of the fairway. He's gotten a little more skip than he'd like. Eric McCabe's going to be throwing his second shot first. Just catching up with Paul Ulibarri, who stood from a standstill position. That's all he had, so looks like he's got a good shot. He'll be settling for a par at best. Throwing his second shot is Paul Macbeth. And barely getting back in bounds is Macbeth's second shot. Waisaki's shot is up. He's going with a wide hyzer. Looks like he may have put too much on it. He has gone deep by at least 
38, maybe 40 feet. Paul here's just going to be looking to lay up, get up and down in two shots here. And he's within 15. Saki is just off the top of the rim. Macbeth is also in for his par four. Ricky will be taking a par as well. And with the slip through by Paul Ulibarri, Paul will be carting a bogey five. And Paul Macbeth is getting crazy here and going for a roller, and that is not going to work out for him. Definitely being aggressive here on this tee. Eric McCabe just going for the left-handed layup, so to speak. He's trying to position himself over there so he can attack the pin from there. Ricky Waisaki is getting very aggressive here, going with a huge pull. And <laughs> to the delight of the crowd, he gets a very nice shot. to be just going over to the left hand side of the fairway and he's going to want that to sit down oh Paul's shot looks to be carrying left he is in bounds but he's going to have a to get up and down from there Eric McCabe's going with the Heiser shout shot out and around the OB. He's going to put himself in the, up there in position for a par. And Paul Yulabar is going here with a forehand. Good looking shot by Paul. After Waisaki's monster drive, he has that for his upshot. Paul's putt is up. Oh, he asked for it to stay in the air and he was just a bit short. Yudelbari for par is just a bit left. Ricky Waisaki cards the only par here on hole six, as most would say the toughest par three in the tournament at 600 feet with OB on left and right. Macbeth looking to take a double bogey. Bogey for McCabe and Ulibarri and par for Ricky Waisaki. Ricky Waisaki on the tee here. Coming in with a beautiful shot straight at us. And he is deep of the basket by about 30, maybe 35 feet. McCabe's going just to lay up here and take his par three. Yulabari's got about 35, maybe 40 feet at most here after nearly acing. He is just a bit wide right on that. 
Macbeth from 40. And it is in. Paul Macbeth cards a birdie two here on hole seven. Oh, Isaki for birdie. Just off the top of the... We've got Paul Macbeth here on hole eight. After the lone birdie on hole seven. And he has put himself about 20 feet deep of the basket. Ricky Waisaki on the tee going with a forehand. Coming in straight at us. And he's also put himself within 20 feet of the basket. Eric McCabe on the tee. Worth noting that there is virtually zero wind out here right now. Yesterday there was a very stiff left to right as McCabe puts himself within 20 as well. And Ulibarri steps up and fires quickly and will be out. He is only about 30 feet away, but he will be the furthest person from the basket. Ulibarri for birdie. Good. Just outside the 33 foot circle. McCabe's putt is up and good. Ricky Waisaki makes good on his birdie attempt. And Macbeth completes the star frame of birdies. That's hole eight. We've got Paul Macbeth on the tee after back-to-back -back birdies. And that will make up for yesterday. Two of the best scores that came in yesterday were Waisaki and Macbeth. However, Waisaki took a four on this hole and Macbeth took a five. So 261 foot hole nine proved to be one of the toughest holes on the course yesterday for these two. Eric McCabe, who had a birdie here yesterday. That was a very nice looking shot, clean. And he'll have a birdie opportunity from 20 feet. And Ulibarri going with a wider right approach. Sits down and is within 30 feet of the pin as well. Waisaki's putt is up and to the right. He's going to have to settle for a par here today. As the rest of the group putts out, I'm going to catch up a little bit with Paige Pierce. Paige, how's it going out here? It's going good. It's actually really calm today. It is insanely calm. Yeah. After 20 and 30 mile an hour winds all day yesterday, we're out here right now and there's, there's not even a two mile an hour no. wind at the moment. Nothing. So how is the tournament going for you? Um, it's going pretty well. Um, I was playing really good today. Uh, I was leading by six, and we finished on hole 13 today, and on hole 11, which is the second island hole, I took a nine. So I was up by six at that point. Katrina took a three, so after that we were tied, and with two holes left, I got one stroke back on the last hole, so I'm up by one going into the last day. All right. It's been a pretty uh, crazy ride with some island holes and some yeah. wind and everything else. We just watched Ulibarri put in for his birdie. I expect the same here out of McCabe. He was in nearly the exact same spot yesterday and he makes yeah. good today. Any particular hole out here? I was just talking about how Waisaki took a four here yesterday and Paul Macbeth took a five and it's one of the easiest holes yeah. on the course. Uh, any particular hole out here that you really like? That I really like? I guess, um, I think hole seven is really cool. Hole six and seven. Um, lots of OB, so you know you gotta choose wisely what you're gonna do, but they um, benefit and if you play them well. All right, well, good luck tomorrow, Paige. Thank you. We are moved over here to hole 10. Paul Macbeth, after his birdie, is still on the tee. Throws a beautiful looking forehand. 
And after skipping up and almost going in, it looks like he's going to be about 28, maybe 30 feet deep of the basket. After birdies on eight and nine, Eric McCabe's next to tee and is going with the wider route. It's coming in nicely and just misses the ace by inches after skipping up. We've got Paul Ulibarri going with the high wide hyzer shot as well that we just saw from McCabe. He's coming out much wider, however. He's gonna need that to skip left for him and does not get much of a skip. He's about 40 feet from the pin. Ricky Waisaki with his beautiful forehand. Looks like he's also hung this a little bit wide or not as that almost skips up and in. Beautiful shots here on hole 10. Yulabari's birdie putt is up and in. Very nice birdie by Paul. And Macbeth makes good as well. We've got tap in birdie putts for McCabe and Waisaki. Easy for the leader card. All four players with a birdie. on the tee. And throwing an absolutely beautiful shot to within 25 feet of the basket. Three consecutive birdies, puts Eric McCabe on the tee next. And he's gonna need for that to come back in bounds and it's not gonna do so. Paul is setting up for the wide high route, which is going to possibly get him out of bounds. It's Ricky Waisaki, fourth to tee. And Ricky's shot was so high that it, uh, it's tough for me to follow, but now you see where it landed. Beautiful shot by Waisaki. Cabe's got about a hundred feet to the pin. You just have to, is there any doubt that it's out of bounds or, or is it? <laughs> if you guys don't think it's out of bounds for sure, then it's in bounds. I can't say for sure. Then, it, then if so it goes to the, yeah. the, the, the player, so the player. So it's a table, right? I know that. The group ruled that it was in fact inbounds and Paul throws his putt up for birdie. He'll have to settle for a par. Macbeth makes good on his birdie putt. Saki squeaks it in as well for his birdie. McCabe cards a bogey four after going out of bounds. 
And Paul, again, was ruled inbounds. And he will settle for a par three. Paul going with his forehand shot here on hole 11. Waisaki also going with a forehand. Paul Ulibarri going with a forehand shot, as it seems to be the way to attack this hole. Eric McCabe told me if it was windy out, he would be laying up just as he did yesterday. And today he's gone with the forehand. Oh my gosh. And it was going to come in perfectly and it hits the electrical box and stays OB. Complete faith and trust in this forehand. McCabe's gonna throw another one. And he has landed inbounds. Tough break for Eric McCabe.
All right, Ricky Waisaki, you just completed round two here at the Texas States. How did it go for you? Well, you know, it was ups and downs, way more ups and downs than yesterday. Uh, it wasn't as windy, so I expected to play better, but it didn't quite happen. Uh, you caught a bad break here and there, but it uh, seems like you handled it pretty well. How did the card uh, shoot? Um, I, th I think uh, Paul sh shot the hot round 55. Uh, he, he played well, and he, he had a hiccup in the last hole, but, but we were battling pretty much the whole round, and uh, I'm, I expect to do the same thing tomorrow. All right, you already just uh, answered my next question. What can we see tomorrow? Maybe a little inclement weather, or what uh, What do you got in store for us? That's right here. I hear the weather's going to be a little bit worse, a little bit of the mix of the first two days, rain, a little bit of rain and, and wind, so I'll be ready for that, and uh, we'll see what tomorrow brings. All right, best of luck to you, buddy. Thanks. I'm the Disc Golf Guy, and this is my video blog. I've caught up with a couple of the gentlemen that we saw on the leader card today. Eric McCabe, Paul McBath, you may have heard of them or something. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how that round. Uh, Eric, uh, a lot less wind today, I think, is going to be the lot. number one story. A lot less. Uh, are you, you, can you even play in non-windy conditions? Aren't you used to that? <laughs> I'm very used to playing in the wind. Uh, it's not as windy all the time in Kansas as people think, only for the glass blown open. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it was, it was a struggle still out there a little bit. Yeah, there's no, there's no p point where you can really let down your guard out here. No. And then we talked the other day about you said you were going to be laying up on the island hole. Yep. And you yep. threw a beautiful forehand. You cannot second guess that no, shot whatsoever. No, I, and you got jacked by the electrical box. And, and I told myself even going into the last three holes that I was, you know, going to, if I go birdie, birdie, birdie on the three, then I'm going to go ahead and lay up again. And I did. I went birdie, birdie, birdie. And then my shot on, what is it, 14, 13, 12, I don't know, one of those numbers over there, turned a little and went OB, so I got a four, so I was like, I want to make up a stroke. And I threw a sidearm, and it was great, and it skipped, and I unfortunately got bad luck. It's a game of inches, and with that being said, we could talk a little bit about some of the OBs that we saw out there. I was flat out wrong on uh, a shot by Paul Ulibarri uh, on one of the temples where it was a game of inches looking at that OB line with the cable and then we saw you slightly OB, well you were OB as they called it yeah. on the final hole, not slightly. Um, Paul, you had some ups and downs but you barely relinquished the tee. I mean you were on fire with just a couple hiccups. Yeah, I mean I had 15 twos out there which is pretty good uh, but those two fives and two fours put that away, you know, put that great score away in just a 55. 55, which is one better than uh, what Waisaki came in when we heard a couple other hot scores. Uh, tomorrow the conditions are going to probably be yet different for the third day. Is there a number in mind or you want to just go out and shred it? What's your plan? Whatever it takes to beat Ricky. It's Sunday. <laughs> I mean, it's Sunday. So. <laughs> it's Sunday. Uh, you've been known to uh, show up on Sunday and play some of the best golf out there. Uh, Emac, you slipped a little off that card, but what's your plan tomorrow? I know you can still finish super yeah, strong. Yeah, uh, same thing as it was today. Just go out and maintain, and uh, don't try to, you know, go for too much. Just play smart and see how the cards fall. All right. Well, there you have it. We've got a couple world champs, two-time world champ, Eric McCabe, world champ, me, zero-time world champ. I think. I'm Let's a time media guy, world champ. Media, media guy, go. I like that. Yeah. Or glow world champ, I am one of those. Well, whatever. All right, we got Paul McBath, Eric McCabe, I'm the Disc Golf Guy, and we'll catch you guys for Championship Sunday. He's the Disc Golf Guy, and that was his video blog.